And so the final score, Michigan wins at 58-53. For Fred Taylor, I'm Bob Costas. So long from Ann Arbor. Relive 81's biggest events in television on the third annual TV Guide Special. From Hill Street Blues to Cronkite's Last Day. From Daytime Queen to Late Night King, Monday. Seventy-seven final seconds. The Omni in Atlanta. Al McGuire's Marquette Warriors in the NCAA championship final against North Carolina. McGuire had announced his coaching retirement earlier in the year, and now as one of the tournament's long shots, his team was awarding him with a going-away present, the national championship. Congratulations from Dean Smith, the opposing coach, and a tearful McGuire had won college basketball's ultimate prize. That was five years ago. Today, Al McGuire returns home to the Milwaukee Arena to see Marquette play at home for the first time in those five years as Marquette hosts the fourth-ranked DePaul Blue Demons. NBC Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball. Today, from the Milwaukee Arena, it's the Blue Demons of DePaul and the Marquette Warriors. Today's game is brought to you by Pontiac. Test drive the new 1982 Pontiac at your Pontiac dealer because now the excitement begins. By Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. And by the U.S. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but the Milwaukee Arena sold out 11,000 fans red hot. A rivalry that dates back some 64 years. DePaul and Marquette. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire returning back to the place where it brought us and him so many pleasant memories. And it has always been an interesting battle between these two Catholic schools. Well, it's very difficult to win at Marquette. They've got tradition here. This game should go down to the wire. Marquette has tremendous guards, Dick. Probably the best set of guards in the country. They got Michael Wilson, who can hit from outside, drive to the iron, and they got the future All-American in Glenn Rivers, who triggers the Warriors. But DePaul has one of the men that you feel is the best college basketball player in the country. He is the best power forward in the country, Cummings. No one has stopped him yet. Let's see what the Warriors do with him, Dick. All right, let's talk a bit about your return. Is it true that you have not seen a Marquette home game since you retired? Five years ago, I didn't want to come back into the arena. Because I feel because I was kind of a, uh, a semi-type, legend-type person. And I wanted Hank Ramos and Rick Majerus to have their run, to have their, their breathing room. So I've never come back to the arena. This is my first time back, and it's nice being home. It really is. If Paul is 19-1, and one, obviously on their way to a tournament bid, if Marquette wins today, and this is their biggest game of the year, it would almost assure them a ticket into the tournament, don't you think? Yeah, I think Marquette, if they win, they obviously go to the NCAA. But even if they lose, they've got a good chance. They should end up the year something like 21-9. and nine. They played three games in a shootout in Alaska. But this game is traditional. Whoever's favorite has nothing to do with it. These two Catholic schools are playing for the Vatican Championship. <laughs> if Paul and Marquette, now let's go to the public address announcer here at the Milwaukee Arena, John O. I got you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming back former Marquette Warrior coach Al McGuire, who is announcing this afternoon's game for NBC along with Dick Enberg.
for this afternoon's game. First for the DePaul Blue Demons. At one guard, number 10, a six one and a half freshman from New York City, Kenny Patterson. At the other guard, number 44, a 6'3 senior from Chicago, Skip Dillard. At center, number 13, a 6'9 freshman from New Lenox, They'll Illinois, the arena, the Walter Downing. Fourth ranked the Paul Blue Demons. They've lost only once all year, 19 and one being introduced. This partisan crowd or the Marquette Warriors, they'll about to roar when their Marquette team is introduced. And we will have the opening tip-off from the Milwaukee Arena in just a moment. Chicago, Terry Cummings, the coach of the Blue... This bud's for everybody who races the weather to bring in the harvest. This bud's for For all you do The king of beers is coming through Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do This bud's for you. The amazing Bic Roller rides so smoothly, it almost rides by itself. Furthermore, uh, scratch that. The amazing Bic Roller, so smooth but never mushes down. So smooth yet even rides through carbons. And don't forget the sales tax. Dear Mary, dear Jane, dear Peggy Sue, you are the only girl for me. Stop riding and let the Bic Roller do the work. In medium and fine line, so smooth it almost rides by itself. Twin Action Norelco Roller Track Rechargeable Razor. Inside three floating heads, Twin Action grips and raises hair up, then razors hair off, closer than ever, without nicks and cuts or soap and water. The Twin Action Norelco Roller Track Rechargeable, because for close shaves, there's no action like Twin Action. <laughs> Pontiac announces cash bonuses on these exciting new Pontiacs. $750 on any Phoenix. $750 on any J2000, $500 on any T1000, and $500 on any Pontiac 6000. Just take delivery between now and March 31. Pontiac will send you a check. See your participating Pontiac dealer who's contributing to these bonuses, and let's get moving. Now the excitement really begins. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire at the Milwaukee Arena, a sellout of over 11,000 fans. We understand that some of you who are not with us for the opening of our telecast from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, have joined us now, and you missed a very touching moment. These fans getting a chance to say not only hello, welcome back, but thank you to Al McGuire, my partner, who for the first time has appeared on this arena or in this arena since he won the national championship five years ago. And I know you were touched by that response. It was real nice. It was uh, sometimes you forget how much everyone helped you and really how many people are aware of you. Sometimes you seem to go by life without stopping to uh, look at things. All right, the lineups for DePaul, 19 and 1. Same lineup we saw last weekend in Syracuse with Downing, the freshman center, Patterson and Dillard at the guards, Cummings uh, and Randolph at forward, Cummings the All-American. And for Marquette University's Warriors, a great backcourt of Wilson, the senior, and the sophomore Rivers. Nine Heiss and Murata are the forwards, and Mark Wart, the leading rebounder, number 32 at center. Marquette in white, the ball in blue. The officials for today's game, all from the Big Ten, Gary Muncy, Tom Rucker, and Carol Cosby. A tap controlled by Dillard of DePaul. Randolph. Inside to Cummings. Back out to Patterson. And now Downing. So all the Blue Demons touch the ball in that sequence. The ball fresh from a scare. They won in overtime earlier this week against St. Joseph's. A foul against DePaul away from the ball. What you have here, Dick, you got the Paul guards that are better than, that are not as good as the Marquette guards, and you got the Paul baseline, which is completely overshadows Marquette's baseline. That was a three-second violation, no foul. 
This is Mark Ward. Morata, good shooter from outside. Mark Ward, a big man and an excellent passer. Nine heist in the post. Terrell Schlund, normally a starter, a broken nose, is on the sidelines of the start. This is Rivers, dumping off the nine heist. Surprisingly, the ball started in the 2-3 zone. I thought the ball would want to create action rather than let Marquette govern the tempo. Marquette wants to slow a game. Now here comes out some paper on the court. The ref called timeout. I say eventually today, if they keep throwing paper on the court, that they'll get a technical on the home team. Hank just got off the bench and told the student body, hey, settle down. We had a big, a big pep rally last night. And the last sub on the team for, the, uh, for Marquette said that uh, we're going to beat the ball so bad that I'm going to play. <laughs> <laughs> now that's confidence. He's a walk-on. Miller partially blocked by Wilson. Wilson, who leads the team in blocks at 6'4", a guard. This is Wilson with it now. He's a senior, and each year he's improved and will make some second, third team All-Americas this year. He's an outstanding player. He's the one who broke the backboard with a dunk at Memphis State earlier this season. Oops, turnover. Was touched. Was touched by Patterson of DePaul. Speaking about Michael Wilson, he'll probably go in the tail end of the first round in the NBA draft. Again, the ball sitting in the 2-3 zone. If Marquette scores this time, they'll hold the ball. They might even hold it now. They are Wilson's fading back towards half court. All right. Nine nice. Wilson. He's way off the mark. But Rivers is there to take it away for Marquette. He cannot get off the floor like that. That is a violation. Once he's on the floor, he cannot come back up off it. It's an automatic walking foul. He got away with it, and Ray Meyer leaping to his feet to argue. Wilson to Mark Ward. They're giving him plenty of room. This is Rivers, the sophomore. And out it comes to Dillard of DePaul. 2-0, the Blue Demons trail. Two minutes and 15 seconds have been played. Randolph gets Murata airborne and ties it up. Beautiful head and shoulder fake. Has complete control of his body. Randolph, one of the better shooters. The ball, the powerhouse of the ball is Dillard, Randolph, and Cummings. They probably score about 70% of the points. Mark Ward inside. Dean Mark Ward, the 6'9 senior, makes it 4 to 2, Marquette. They're going to get a technical foul if they keep throwing this paper on the court. From River. And of course, Ray Meyer arguing that when they throw the paper on the court, you take away our fast break opportunity. He's absolutely right. Ray, uh, Ray's right, plus Ray doesn't feel too good today. He has the flu, he said he aches all over. 68-year-old head coach of the Blue Demons, the winningest active coach, and number five all-time past John Wooden with his victory at Syracuse last weekend. And now the public address announcer is warning the fans if paper continues to be thrown by the Marquette audience, a technical foul will be called. And now Hank Raymonds, who replaced Al McGuire five seasons ago. Hank is uh, shooting for the century mark today. A victory would be his 100th since taking over here at Marquette. Excellent coach. We had a good run together for 13 years. Four to two. The Warriors lead it. DePaul trying to tie it up. Knocked away by Wilson. He just has tremendous leaping power. Now, I'm not reaching, Dick, but when I said on the top of the show that Marquette has the best set of guards, I believe, in the country. They're unbelievably fast. There's Wilson again getting his hands on it. What do you see when Glenn Rivers gets going? They're like magicians. They're like pickpockets. Wilson is a senior from Memphis, Tennessee, and Rivers, the sophomore, is from Maywood, Illinois. Get the ball in the Cummings. There, there you is. go. Cummings, short on the bank. Mark Ward rebounds and has it stolen by Dillon. Who almost slips one in backhanded. Nyhaus. Wilson all the way. Michael Wilson makes it six to two. Michael Wilson. We welcome those of you who have watched the University of North Carolina Charlotte game against Southern Florida. That's DePaul. Cutting Marquette's lead to six to four as Walter Downing, who almost enrolled at Marquette at the last minute, decided to stay home in Chicago at DePaul as his first basket. We played nearly four minutes. Marquette getting the first basket and staying uh, ahead of DePaul thus far. The Blue Demons ranked third in our current NBC poll. This is Wilson. Not there. Oh, those rims seem tight. 
Randolph to Dillard. Dillard to Patterson. Blocked. <laughs> you see Rivers get there that time? Unbelievable. Dillard touched at last. It's Marquette the other way. The two guards for Marquette are both 6'4 and great leapers, and they've demonstrated that already. Four minutes and seven seconds gone. Al McGuire returns to Milwaukee Dr. and Port, the Port, arena at Marquette Dr. University. Port, We're gonna go through some of his basketball lexicon. Aircraft carrier, well, Terry Cummings pretty well fits that role, and Marquette in our first break leads it six to four. Port of Gaul, Hong Kong. Sir, combat hold skunk The out Navy. Over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Let go of the anchor. Liberty call now, Liberty call. Speak to your recruiter or call this toll-free number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. In northwest Montana, up by Hungry Horse and Lone Pine, sits Whitefish. It's a long way to anywhere from Whitefish. So when the railroad needed computer equipment here, Honeywell was the choice. A Honeywell system may not need service often, Have a nice trip. but there's a Honeywell service engineer to come take care of it. Hey, how are you, Wayne? How you doing? Even in Whitefish. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. going to be going through some of your very special basketball language. The aircraft carrier is something you always gave to a real big man. You called me a cupcake. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I want to go into that. No, a cupcake is an, is an easy opponent. It's a, a piece of cake. It's a team that comes down and plays with snowshoes on it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have some, uh, not only uh, the lexicon of Al McGuire, but some nice uh, artwork from Frank Becerra during the course of our First half and second half, six to four, Marquette with the ball and the lead. I'm surprised that the ball is playing a two-three zone because it's allowing Marquette to, again, govern the tempo. I thought the ball would come up, try to turn it over, get a lead, and then go into a zone. This kid can hit. Mark Murata, he's an A student. Six-seven sophomore from Pittsburgh, makes it eight to four, Marquette. From River. Played four and a half minutes. There. Rebound Dillard and a whistle. It might have been a nine eyes that time. Or Mark Watt, one or the other. Marquette foul. 34, Brian Nineheis of Dutch descent from Oostburg, Wisconsin. That sounds as if it might be a Dutch community here in Wisconsin. Eight to four, Marquette leads it. Patterson. Coming in, in, rebound, Murata, here comes the break, Rivers to Nineheis, he scores! Beautiful pass! What a pass, forget the basket, what a pass. A future All-American. Glenn Dock Rivers with a perfect 50-yard, 50 50-foot 50 pass for the score. Patterson nails one from the corner to make it 10 to 6. The freshman from Forest Hills, New York. But the ball needed that to get going. Inside to Marquardt, and he hits. The play has not only been frantic, but superb thus far. Downey's giving him too much room. Downey has to play him a little bit closer in the middle of that zone. Inside the Downing, nice move on the baseline to score. Watch Glenn Rivers on this replay here. Now watch this pass. Nine Eyes just stretches his arms all the way up. He extends them all the way. That's an athlete when a guy can put a pass that early in the game when you're not sweating. Here's another angle up. Watch how Nine Eyes stretches out. In for six points. That's right. That might well have been into the end zone. The basket at the other end, live action was good. Downing, after he was fouled by Mark Murata. Hits the three-point play and cuts Marquette's lead to three. Long pass to Nineheis. Downing back to discourage any shot at a 15-footer. 
Marquette does not only get into a transition game. They had a chance then, they had the right numbers, but they pulled up and set up against the Paul zone. Downing with a foul. Here's some finals today. St. Joe's a winner, nearly beat the ball early in the week. South Florida over Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte. Georgia, we'll see them next weekend against North Carolina, beating Vanderbilt. Michigan upsets Illinois, took some air out of the ball, and the Wolverines win in the Big Ten. Had some tough times earlier this year, and the last couple of weeks have done well. Rivers up the alley, dumps it off, and surprise Marquardt. Murata comes up with a loose ball. Can't hit Rivers. Can't hit beautiful block by Cummings, and then Rivers fouled him. Boy, did Cummings do a job defensively. Watch this block. What happens is Rivers is, gets up in the air and he starts jockeying. He spreads his legs. When you don't want to come down, you spread your legs, which keeps you up longer. But Cummings had him covered like a blanket. Not only blocked the shot, but scooped up. Ball and DePaul after the foul. And the foul situation by the side. Patterson hits again. And now it's 12 to 11. Marquette's six point lead has been shaved to one. 30 seconds left in the first half. The ball going for its 20th win of the year. Marquardt not there. Rebound Corbin. He's in the game for the first time. Freshman from South Carolina. This is Dillard. All away. And Dillard may be guilty of a charge. Yes. Now he got hung up in the air that time. He didn't put the shot up right. He knew he made a bad move. He kind of put up what we call a prayer shot, a Hail Mary. That's a sixth first. team foul on New Paul. Timeout. And we have a timeout. 13 minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half. Marquette leading to Paul 12-11 from Al McGuire's glossary French pastry. You don't need it. That's just Hollywood going for an Oscar. Unnecessary acting to make the shot look better than it really is. If you're one of the many people whose life insurance needs are changing today, check with State Farm. I'm State Farm agent Jim Scally. In today's economy, people's life insurance needs are changing, and State Farm is changing to meet those needs. We have a variety of life insurance products, all at a good price. We'll help you plan the program that's right for you, and we'll be there to help you keep it up to date. Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This bud's for everyone who's in the groove. It's five minutes on the upswing of five. Outside at 87 degrees under sunny blue skies. Stay tuned for my man Flash. I'm moving out of here, having myself an ice cold brew. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. All you do is for you. I know. Business is so quiet. You could read the books here. That book by the phone can help. The Bell System Yellow Pages. Free parking, free delivery. That's Fred. Fred's furniture next door. Oh, he does a great business. Where beautiful hair is a tradition. That's Miss Clear. <laughs> oh, is she busy? Sure. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks to people when they let their fingers do the walking and are ready to talk business. I'm ready. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We are big on books. Let your fingers do the walking. A renewal of one of the greatest rivalries in college basketball. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Bruins from UCLA. Then a battle for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Undefeated Davey Moore takes on Tadashi Mahara. Plus figure skating with heartthrob Randy Gardner tomorrow. Looking from the perspective of Ray Meyer, there's his counterpart, 57-year-old Hank Raymonds in his fifth year at Marquette. The Warriors lead 12-11. 2-2-1, two, two, zone pressure up court. And there's a deflection by Dillard to Patterson, and Patterson scores, and he is fouled by Wilson of Marquette. So the freshman, Kenny Patterson, with six points, and Wilson guilty of the foul. I want to correct the foul situation. The scoreboard was incorrect. He caught him with his body. It was a good block up above, but his hips caught Patterson. Patterson's extremely quick. If he gets that ball on a, on a fast break like that, it's usually two points in the bank. You're better off leaving him alone. He has six points already this game. Take that seven, and DePaul leads for the first time, 14 to 12. Nice pressure up court. Rivers to nine ice. Won't go 
point of Cummings in that situation. He's playing a one-man zone. The team fouls. Marquette has four. DePaul, two. On the correct bet. Rivers to Murata. And now Wilson. Marquette playing control ball. Murata from the side. Ties it at 14. He has four. Solid type player. He's a half a step slow, but he makes it up with body position. Inside to Cummings hit the backboard, and Murata recovers for Marquette. Wilson brings it down. Wilson's trying to get the seams of the, zone, of the zone now. Watch for Wilson to take the shot to the side this time. There he goes. Travel before he put the ball on the floor. Wilson guilty of the turnover. And with the game tied at 14 to pull the other way. Other final scores this afternoon. Many of you on NBC saw these games. Texas Tech over TCU. Oklahoma wins handily against Iowa State. Texas El Paso losing to New Mexico. Convincing win for the Lobos. The double team and Cummings underneath. They're laying off Colvin. Randolph, Marquardt rebounds, clears it to Rivers. Wilson, little daylight, couldn't get inside. Rivers, Marquardt back to Wilson, free from the 23rd. Patterson has it knocked away by Murata. Wilson, Marquardt, Murata. Chris passing there, excellent ball handling. Murata giving Marquette a 16-14 lead. 11 minutes, 12 seconds left in the first half. Traveling against Patterson. And another final today. Wake Forest in our top 20, defeating Georgia Tech 53 to 38. We'll give you last night's scores in just a moment. UCLA and Notre Dame. The renewal of that outstanding rivalry tomorrow here on NBC from Pauley Pavilion. Will Diggerfeld hold the ball tomorrow against the quickness of UCLA? What do you think? I think he has to take the air out of the ball. Mark Barr's pass stolen by Cummings. Dillard with the ball. The ball trailing by two. Cummings can't hit. He's not scored yet. Wilson the other way. Great pass! But right back to quiet the audience. Oh, is Skip Dillard not a bad guard in his own right? First points for Dillard. As we approach the halfway mark of this first 20-minute period. Murata partially blocked by Cummings. And oh, saved by Wilson. Excellent play. Good timing. Let's go back to... Right, watch the, here's where Wilson gives a bounce pass, but he's also leading it to Doc Rivers. Doc flies like a bird. His uncle is Jim Brewer, former Minnesota star and 10 years in the NBA, now with the Lakers. He said, my uncle Jim is my idol. I came up to see him play when Minnesota played your club here at Marquette. And little would you have known at that time, that's when young Glenn Rivers decided he wanted to come to Marquette. He said, it's a lasting impression. He liked the fans here. If I knew he was coming, I would have stayed. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. Exactly 10 minutes left. A push. Now that's not a foul, that's a very close game in McGuire's terms. <laughs> Alone at last. Like the film, look. Huh? Oh, that, Doris, I need the blimp behind me because... Three's a crowd, Phil. <laughs> Phil may not know that Goodyear radials and their components have hundreds of quality checks behind them, but he sure likes the mileage he gets. Doris will go a long way with the blimp behind us. Get the blimp behind you. Come up to Goodyear. I should have married Stanley. He just has a dog. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, downbeat style. Whether it's jazz, classical, country, or rock, music and Michelob is always the perfect arrangement. Because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. 
Put a little week in, in your week. Tomorrow, it's a battle for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship as undefeated Davey Moore takes on Tadashi Mahara. Then, continued coverage of the 1982 World Pro Figure Skating Championship with Olympic great John Curry and Randy Gardner tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Marquette leading 18-16 at the halfway mark this first half. Duke and Maryland, some of you were expecting to see that game because of the interest of this one. NBC expanded the coverage and update you on that game. The Terrapins lead the Blue Devils 15-14 in the middle of the first half. The Paul is still in the zone. They started with it. It's 2-3 zone. Tight around the paint. Marana triggers it into Wilson. What's interesting thus far is Marquette's front line, considered inferior to DePaul's, has outscored DePaul's front line 14 to 7. Well, I, I never would have realized that. Rivers way outside. See, Rivers has range. He can beat you in so many ways. He can post up, he can fast break, he can hit from downtown. Only a sophomore. Al and many others feel he's a definite future on Dillard, not there. Corbin can't rebound. Murata trying to save and does not. He was on the baseline. No basket. It's out of bounds to DePaul. No basket. No basket. DePaul for out of bounds. Hank Raymond's not only an outstanding basketball player at St. Louis University, was on an NIT championship in 48, but an excellent baseball player. Played a couple of minor league seasons with the Boston Braves organization. Get it into Cummings. Let's start playing that way. Cummings, not there. Times. It was a late whistle, but it was an obvious walk. Tom is only a freshman, and he is a quite a find. He's a gem. They got recruited him very late. Columbia, South Carolina. So Marquette leading 20 to 16 with her eyes on the national tournament. A bid and a victory today certainly would enhance their chances. Rivers to nine heist. Front man commit, then he kicked off the pass. Brian Neinheis, a surprise starter at 6'10, averaging three points a game this year, has six already against DePaul, traveling against the Blue Demons. And Ray Myers' club is in a bit of trouble in this first half. Like I said last week against Syracuse, Nick, they like Joe off. Lewis. So they're in that ring, and the ring's only so big, and they stay at you, and eventually they're going to break out. Rivers brings it in. Marquette with a six-point advantage. Murata helping outside. Still don't think the ball should have been in the zone. Marquardt is short, and it is a foul on Marquardt over the shoulder trying to recover the rebound. His first Marquette foul. foul. Here are some scores last night of interest. Teams uh, ranked highly. North Carolina in the top five, beating Furman. North Carolina State, a winner against the Citadel. Idaho's in our top 20. They win against Northern Arizona. And UCLA, USC, one of the great rivalries, as this one is. The Bruins beat the Trojans 69-66. That's a seven in a row now for UCLA. And Larry Farmer since he lost to USC at the sports arena. And we'll see UCLA, Notre Dame tomorrow. UCLA might have the best material in the country. Randolph to Cummings. And he was on the baseline. Out of bounds to Marquette. 22-16. Of course, we'll be selecting our most valuable player in today's game, and we'll announce that in the second half. Here they come. They're going man to man now. now watch him. Watch Marquette try to open it up, isolate Glenn Rivers or Wilson. Marquardt. Good mobile offense. Moving the big men outside. Now Wilson is open. Rivers underneath. Dillard for DePaul. This is what DePaul has to do. Make the transition game. Corbin. Fouled by Wilson, and again that 6-4 guard, and he doesn't look that big up high. Mark almost foul. had another block. Number 10, Michael Wilson, his second. He feeds over to the left-hand side here. Will shoot two. And he catches him, but he's hanging in the air. He committed too soon, Michael Wilson, that time. Wilson's brother, Ed, was a freshman on the Memphis State team that went to the final game against UCLA back in 73. Corbin at the line, looking for his first point. Not a good foul shooter.
right down the bottom of the well with that try. He's shooting 68% oh, from the line. I owe you one. <laughs> I'm sorry, young guy. Less than eight minutes remaining in the first half. Corbin trying to cut the lead to four. And does. Timeout. Seven minutes, 53 seconds left. First half. Marquette leads 22-18. You want somebody who can really go up high. Then you got an Al McGuire cloud piercer. That's what you call it. Bill Neary, wasn't he one of those? No, no, no. Who was it? You had? Well, we'll ask you later. <laughs> Pontiac announces cash bonuses on these exciting new Pontiacs. $750 on any Phoenix. $750 on any J2000. $500 on any T1000. And $500 on any Pontiac 6000. Just take delivery between now and March 31. Pontiac will send you a check. See your participating Pontiac dealer who's contributing to these bonuses. And let's get moving. Now the excitement really begins. What's more natural than spicy hot food? An icy cold beer. Ah, what's more natural than natural light from Anheuser-Busch? It's the beer with a taste for food. So, when you want to put out the fire... What's more natural than natural light? College basketball, Notre Dame, UCLA, the rivalry, never ordinary, always dramatic, a, a classic, tomorrow. Let's go back to Cloud Piercer. Who was your all-time uh, leaper in that regard? Well, Dudley was the fellow, but the real leaper I had, which we used to nickname him the elevator man, was Rick Cobb. Now he's an assistant coach uh, with Marquette. Uh, Rick Cobb used to go so high that he got burned on re-entry. <laughs> You're not writing these down, are you? No, I, I said that about two years ago. <laughs> Here come the Warriors, leading 22-18. Nice pressure up court. Mandy Johnson in the game for the first time. Patterson with a steal for DePaul. Boy, this freshman has matured beautifully for Ray Meyer. Shot from the corner. 22 to 20 the score. Marquette's give them all they can eat from the outside because they're double teaming Cummings. The Paul has to get Cummings out of the blocks. He's been kind of in a uh, twilight zone so far the game. Three guard offense. This is Mandy Johnson with Wilson and Rivers in the backcourt. Mark Ward and Nine Ice are the only two front liners. What they truly are in, Dick, is a, a four corners. That's what they're in. We got three guards in there on the four corners trying to get a chippy layup, go back door if possible, eat up a little bit of the clock. That's where I thought that the ball was wrong earlier in the game going to that zone. The clock kept once the lowest scoring game. There it is. Take it back out, back out the half court, spread it open, and let one of these quick guards break through. Our score is 22-20 Marquette. The same score, Maryland 22, Duke 20 in the first half of their game. Well, Ray Meyer saw a lot of this in the game earlier this week against St. Joe's and almost lost it. St. Joe's nearly pulled off an upset at the horizon. Finally, it was DePaul 46-44 in overtime. We asked Ray Meyer before the game today, are you in favor of a clock in college basketball? And he said, yes, he would like to see the 30-second clock introduced. We'll be able to see that again tomorrow if Notre Dame can get an early lead against UCLA. There they are. There's the lamp I told you they'd get. They spread them out. They kept patient. What Coach Meyer has to do is alternate with another guard for quickness. Ryan Neinheis has eight points. He's the high scorer for Marquette. 24-20 to Paul Reynolds. Randolph way off the mark. And traveling is the call against Randolph on the follow. Final score today. Georgetown. Ooh. Ooh, they did a dollar and change. And change. That's right. A couple of touchdowns. That's another bit of lexicon. We'll get to that later. Uh, they got to put another guard in the counter. Rivers is too quick for uh, Randolph. Here's Manny Johnson, the freshman. Cummings rebounds. 
Cummings, who is in the top 12 scoring and rebounding in the nation. A catch now in the zone. Randolph. Well, he just is so no steady with that baseline. 24-22, Randolph was six. Marquette's overplaying coming so much that Randolph and Dillard and Patterson can have all they can eat. Less than five minutes remaining in the first half. Well, they left the four corners, now they're back to Patton's. Rivers, rebound. Patterson, the guard, and he is fouled. Nine heist got him. And that will be Marquette's seventh team foul, so DePaul is now in the bonus. Second individually on Nineheis. Dick, an important statistic right here is that DePaul has only committed three team fouls. They have four to give before the uh, Marquette gets to the one and one Normally, the team that gets to the one and one first wins the ball game, normally. You're talking about both halves or in the first half? Alone? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I, I, I've always said that, they get to the one and one Let's say the game ends at halftime, normally you should win. <laughs> well, we'll see if that works out. I don't think the game will end at halftime, but maybe, you know, anything can happen. Patterson with a chance to tie the game as he goes for his 10th point. Confident young guy out of New York City. It's even at 24. Get the ball into the middle, get it into the middle to break the pressure. If not, you're in trouble. There you go, in the middle, now you break it, go for the basket. Rivers to nine highs, Cummings went flying by and got him. No, traveling is the call. Good call, he was on top of the play. Excellent call that time. Terry Cummings, the leading scorer for DePaul, the All-American. Yeah, let's watch the call. Game. Watch him drag his foot here. There we go. See him drag it there. I was hard to say that Cummings has not scored in the game, averaging 22 on the season, and may get his first chance here as he was fouled by Nineheis, and that is his third personal foul. You've got to remember, Dick, and the coaches have been around for a while, if they want to stop a person, they can. Now, usually by trying to stop a guy, you leave so many other avenues open that you're going to lose the game anyway. Cummings first point of the game, and DePaul back in the lead, 25-24. This is Dwayne Johnson, a 6'6 freshman from Long Island City, New York, and nine heist goes out. Six twenty-four to Paul at the four twenty-two mark. Kicked out of bounds by Corbin. I'd like everyone out there to count to ten: a thousand and one, a thousand and two, a thousand and three. Then you know how long ten seconds is—a long time. So teams should be very patient, bringing the ball up over the court. A thousand and two, a thousand and three, a thousand and four, a thousand and five, a thousand and six. See that? That was even half the time. Inside the Rivers. Marquette now looking for a tying basket. Yeah, they're trying to extend the ball's uh, defense. So they go one on one. Rivers for the second time, a bit too clever for Marquardt, who wasn't looking for the pass. A little bit too much French pastry that time, Dick. Marquardt was making the right move. He was, he was going towards the basket for the rebound. Well, you talked about a dollar game, and that's uh, whenever a team gets 100 points in a contest. Georgetown had a dollar today in their victory against Seton Hall. And change. And change. <laughs> Last year, 90,000 high school graduates joined the Army. Some came for the challenge, some for the excitement, some for the new Army College Fund. For every dollar they put in, Uncle Sam puts in five or more. So after two years in the Army, they can have $15,200 for college. Be all that you can be. Call for your free booklet on the Army College Fund. You'll be in good company. In the Army. Now till February 13th at Sears, the fitness store. Save $50 on Sears 1,000 pound total capacity weight bench. Save $20 on our 177 pound weight set. Or save $30 on Sears 20 inch exercise wheel cycle. Save $30 on a Lifestyler 1000 home fitness system. Save 20% on Wilson sweat separates. For fun, fitness, and savings, you can count on Sears. 
Tomorrow, a knockout on the show on NBC Sports World. Undefeated Davey Moore battles Tadashi Mahara for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Plus, the 1982 World Pro Figure Skating Championship continues with heartthrob Randy Gardner tomorrow. One of the most colorful courts in all of basketball, perhaps the most. In fact, it is a piece of art. Robert Indiana, the artist, actually designed this court at the Milwaukee Arena. The Mecca that you see stands for Milwaukee Exposition Convention Center and Arena. And that was the Mecca of college basketball in 1977 when Al McGuire won his national championship here with Marquette. Hank Raymond did not want this floor. Matter of fact, he fought it kind of hard, and uh, but the Bucks wanted it. And finally, uh, it went towards the Bucks. I like it. I, I just uh, one of the many. Uh, your Marquette teams were always some, one of the most colorfully dressed and attired. Always new uniforms. It kind of fits in with the program. Showing another face out there. One three one zone. The ball is never led by more than two. It's 26 24. The Blue Demons looking for their 20th win. Diller. Morata can't control the rebound. Corbin gets it and he can't score. Dwayne Johnson rebounded for Marquette. They're looking for the tying basket. Backing it up a little bit, trying to isolate the ball players, make it one-on-one. -on -one. Dwayne Johnson's good in the one-on-one -on -one game. We call that a blacktop game, a slam game, a playground game, why a fence game. Gary McMillan is in for the first time for DePaul, number 14. Morata. He has ambitions to become a Rhodes Scholar. All A student, nearly all A's, in pre law. Back in a 2 3 zone because Mark had took the ball out of bounds in the baseline. Morata, Rivers. Morata has to let that shot go up when he's free like that. Wilson is free. Hammers it in, and the game is tied at 26. Four points for Wilson. Uh, here's that trap zone again. It's a 1 3 1 trap out there. Looking to get the ball now down to Cummings. They can reach it underneath there because of the alignment. Dillard inside, flips it up and scores! A desperation gets scooped Dillard by Dillard. Corbin. Luke Chamberlain finger roll. Matter of fact, we have Larry Costello on a halftime show today. Very, I think it's a very interesting piece. He used to coach the Milwaukee Bucks here when they won the World's Championship. Inside is Murata. Cummins went for the steal. Marquardt got it back. Cummins had left his uh, defensive area in an alert play by Marquette to tie it at 28. It's been a good first half. This is a tournament-type game. Uh, Cummings using his left arm, or no, traveling was the call against Cummings. Let's go back to the alert play by Marquardt. For for this, here's the last play against the 1-3-1 one zone. Here's where he comes in with the fingertip roll. He's kind of hung in the air and just let it scoop up there. That was right off the shoelaces. Right at 28, Rivers to Murata. 30 to 28, Murata has 10 points. From River, he's from Pittsburgh. Cummings, he hasn't a basket yet. Blocks. Beautiful block, I thought. And a foul is called against Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, DJ get in there. Ah, oh, that's going to be a technical foul. You keep, you can't Market. throw that paper on the court like that. At least didn't stop action. The whistle had already blown it. Here, was it a foul? Now watch DJ come over. This is DJ. He's a freshman out of New York City. Beautiful block up there. He did foul with his body after it. He, there's another angle of it. Now watch DJ Sky. He went two years to high school out here in a, in a private military school called St. John's Military Academy in Delaware. Cummings third point, all on free throws, and now with a chance to tie the game with 137 left in the half. If, the, if Marquette stays close going to the last five minutes of this game, I think they'll win. 30 all is the score. Right at 24, 26, 28, and 30. Dillard coming up with the ball. Andy Paul with a chance to move in front. Randolph way off the mark. Dwayne Johnson rebounds. He's averaging eight points a game coming off the bench, the freshman Johnson. Yeah, he puts the ball up when he gets it. He has a lot of fakes inside. He has a nose for the basket. Maryland leads Duke at the half, 30 to 25. We're coming down to the final minute here at the
Milwaukee Arena. Uh, Hank is going to force him out of their zone. The ball has to come out and play man to man, otherwise they'll play for one shot. There's a minute left. Game even at 30 here in Milwaukee. It's not going to work, DePaul. Marquette's going to get the last shot unless the great changes his defense. They got the lead. Illegal. They're keeping two men in the backcourt here. The ball is, so that's a legal move. Rivers sees some daylight. Oh, what a play by Rivers, and he's fouled by Cummings. Here, go, here goes Glenn. Here goes the man, Doc. A lot of head and body fakes. He's constantly moving. See what he does? He's up in the air, Dick. He readjusts the ball with his arms. Now watch how he moves the ball around with his arms. See, over there now, he moves it all the way over to this side. And yes, Terry, you did foul. Seven point is what Rivers is looking for in the game. He's got it. And Marquette leads 33-30 on the three-point play by Rivers. Deflected out of bounds by Murata. 30 seconds left. Larry Costello, coach here with the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA, former Niagara University star. He's done it all. He's the featured guest of Al McGuire at halftime. It well, looks like one shot now, Dick. They're down by three. They like to get in down one. They don't want to go in down five. Marquette's content with the game the way it's sitting now. They're going to stay around the paint in a tight two-three zone. They'll take the shot with about six seconds left. Usually the score is made off the rebound, not the shot. Inside it goes. Here's the rebound. And it's what? Out of bounds. Or no, a foul has been called on Bernard Randolph for holding. So that backfired on DePaul. Not one and one yet, Dick, so they get the ball out. Not a good play there. The shot should have been taken, and Cummins should have looked for inside position to rebound. Two seconds left in the half, so Marquette will try one long desperation pass. There it is. Plenty of time. Johnson pushed off. Lucky he wasn't called for a foul. A second should have clicked off the clock because the man touched the ball. Now the ball will go into the bomb pass. Two seconds when he threw the ball. It's supposed to start as soon as the ball is touched in play. It was deflected by a DePaul player. Went out of bounds to Marquette. And there's still two seconds left. You can't come out of it any better than this. Yeah, what, what, watch the touch. See, he just touches it there. He flexes it a little bit. Now, you've got to remember, when the clock has two seconds on it, that means there's less than two seconds left in the game. Are you sure of that? I'm 99 and 9 tenths percent sure, but everybody here is shaking their head saying no. <laughs> Every year you change it, I can't keep it straight. <laughs> I think there's more than two seconds left. No, because when you get to one second and then beep, so it always has to be less than what's shown on the clock, no? I, I gotta go back and think on this. <laughs> there's less than two seconds. I'm gonna bet my life on it. Oh, there's the no, one second. I that told you. Count. I told you. No, no way. That doesn't the, count. The guy hurt me over there. Hey, watch this out. The guy touched the ball, so he has to touch it. Now, now there's more than one second. No. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. Here we go. All right, Marquette with a chance for a quick shot. Wilson has to hurry. officials they were always a focal point of Al McGuire at halftime Marquette leads 33-30 let's flash back to that NCAA championship game that's Al McGuire on the sidelines as his Warriors I'm saying beat North Carolina. Carolina the soliloquy from Macbeth I didn't do it you know something you don't John, even like me out there John Williams the Boston Pops conductor Perfect. may be in real trouble if people in Boston see the way you could orchestrate you could go to Boston and we're going to go to a commercial Marquette 33 to Paul 30. Stay with us. An interesting halftime show coming up. Marquette leading by three at the half over DePaul. It's interesting that the two leading scorers, Al, for these clubs, uh, Cummings, a 22-point average, scored only four free throws, and Michael Wilson had only four points. He's averaging 17 for Marquette. Well, what happened is they're putting two men on Cummings on the baseline. They're letting the other guys shoot from the outside. Uh, Michael Wilson is not having a hot game so far. He should come out a little bit stronger the second half. But it looks to me that this game's going to go down to the wire. I'd be surprised if Paul would start with a, with a zone like they did in the top of the game. I think the Paul wants to create more play because they got better talent. 
Larry Costello was a coach here with the Milwaukee Bucks when they won the NBA championship in 1971. A former guard in the NBA, played at Niagara, also coached the women's team. The women's basketball team here for a year. He's a great guy. And he's also now the head coach at Utica College. Let's watch him in action. Pull it back. Take it back. Pressure on the ball, Whitehead. Stay down. Drop the ball. Okay, play. More passion cutter. Drop the ball. Touch. Mine up, Eddie. Eddie. Come on, Eddie, up here, Eddie. Jason. How many times do we throw the ball away when we're being overplayed? The greatest asset that we can have with this team and this personnel is patience. I believe I am hardworking. I believe I'm loyal and dedicated. And I truly enjoy my work. And in fact, it's not work for me. It's just fun. Uh, I've been very fortunate, I think, over my whole career as a player and as a coach, uh, working with athletes. I'm sure also that everyone that I have coached has not liked me 100%. Uh, I think Welcome to our world. That's right. It's, it's impossible to uh, have everyone like you, but I think the important thing is that they respect you. And they know you're trying to uh, do the right job and the right thing and treat them equally as best as you can. Hey, Larry, make a, a, a parallel between Utica, Division Three school last year when you went there, and the Milwaukee Bucks, an expansion team. And you were a, uh, a young NBA pro coach. That's exactly right. Uh, I had very little coaching experience when I uh, come into the, in Milwaukee. In fact, I only coached one year of high school. Uh, now I got the job in a college situation. I never coached college before until last year. And there's a big difference between coaching college and pros. Uh, college is by far tougher. There's, there's no question about it. In 1971, Larry, when you won the NBA National Championship against the Baltimore Bullets in four games, what factor was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in those games? Uh, I believe he was the same factor that he was in all of our ball games, just a very dominating influence. And, of course, we were mentioning Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and this guy was so fantastic. We went from 27 games our first year to 55 wins our second year, and that's quite a number of wins. In the four uh, years following that, we won over 60 games. And at the time, I was fighting and clawing for every win. I really didn't know how much fun I was having until I look back on this. Let me take it back to yesteryear, 1967, the Philadelphia Warriors, supposedly, the sports writers throughout the NBA said it was the best team in the last 35 years. How good was that team? Is, was it truly better than the teams today? I believe so, and I say that in a humble manner. Uh, when I was playing there, and uh, I know we had a 68-13 record, and the, the season passed by, the seasons continued to come along and pass by, and it never dawned on me how great that team really was. Plus, you had four letters, Wilt, W-I-L-T. <laughs> yeah, Wilt had his uh, best season ever, I believe, that year, where he not only scored, he passed, he did it all. And uh, he was an unbelievable player. Uh, you know, you remember that fallaway jump shot that he used to make. Oh, so his finger roll. <laughs> finger roll. The guy would never practice that shot. How he ever made it in the game, I'll never know to this day. Uh, if Dr. Naismith didn't invent basketball, what would you be doing? Do you have invented the game yourself? <laughs> I don't know, but I know one thing. I'm glad he invented it because I really enjoy it. And not only coaching it, I could watch a basketball game every single day. I could watch films night and day because I dislike it. The time goes so fast. It's really not work. And uh, to me, basketball is a great game. The high and soft. Just lay on, use the board. Hey, dribble the foul line, take a little jump shot. Dribble hard, square off, face the hoop. Play good defense now. Here we go. Hustle back. Hey, got to hustle back in midcourt. We're short of Just when we thought we were safe, there's another Al McGuire on the way. <laughs> this is Al's son, Allie's son, Al. Boy, he looks like he's going to be a fullback. Yeah, that's my grandson. He's two and a half years of age, and uh, he's okay. He goes out with me now and then, and he has Coke, and I have... What do I have, AJ? What does granddad drink? Oh. Beer. Beer, oh! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah, he does look a little like Billy Packer. <laughs> Good to have him here. Let's look at the top ten. I know that's in your top ten, but let's look at our NBC panel of sports writers, and, and here is their top ten total. Yeah, I guess it's on its way. 
be an interesting week in that Virginia beat North Carolina. Virginia, oh, does move ahead by one point. Missouri getting uh, five first place votes. The Cavaliers, five, then DePaul, North Carolina, and Iowa, a big winner over Indiana earlier in the week, all tied for the third spot. And in the next half of the top ten, well, Minnesota's coming on strong. They seem to be with Iowa, the class of the Big Ten. Uh, Alabama's been a sleeper, but they're an outstanding ball club. That whole conference down there is upset. Oregon State could have the quickest team in the country. Tulsa, they won the NIT last year. They're going to be in the NCAA this year. And Arkansas has that great coach, Eddie Sutton. All right, that's the top ten. We'll review the number 11 through 20 positions in the second half. Here at the half, Marquette leading fourth rank. Well, now third rank to Paul, 33-30. Back with the second half action right after we pause for these words from your favorite station. A world premiere movie, The Day the Bubble Burst. David Ogden Stiers manipulates stock. <laughs> Precisely. Richard Crenna craves women and power. What goes up must come down. Audra Lindley, the psychic. I see a sharp decline. Robert Hayes, love conquers all. Robert Vaughn loses everything. Could it happen again? Sunday. From the Milwaukee Arena, college basketball is brought to you by Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. By the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. And by Gillette Right Guard Solid with the action-triggered formula. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. Guess who's blowing away its competition? The new size Chevy S10, the hottest selling new truck in Chevy history. Chevy S10. With higher EPA gas mileage ratings than any of the best-selling imports. It has two walls of steel in the box sides the imports don't have. And a big roomy cab with more head and legroom than the best-selling imports and more legroom than any full-size pickup. The new size Chevy S10. Now get a $500 cash bonus on new Chevy S10 pickups. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why Right Guard Solid has an action-triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right Guard action-triggered formula helps keep you dry and odor-free all day. Right Guard Antiperspirant Solid. From the third annual TV Guide Special. From the Royal Vows to Luke and Laura's Wedding. From Wimbledon to the World Series, Monday. Marquette 15 and 6 on the season, leading by 3 over the 19 and 1 DePaul Blue Demons. Now let's go to College Park, Maryland. Update on the Duke, Maryland game. University of Maryland women's team 84. Mel Proctor with Bucky Waters at Cole Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Maryland in College Park, Maryland. The Maryland Terrapins leading Duke 34 to 27 with 17-15 remaining in the second half. Freshman Adrian Branch at the free throw line. He scored eight points. He was just fouled by Chip Engel and trying to complete a three-point play. Gives him a total of nine points. And Maryland leads by eight, 35-27. This is Tom Emma, number 22. Emma, a junior from Manhasset, New York. McNeely out of El Paso, Texas. McNeely from the outside. Veal has done a great job on the boards. Herman Veal. Maryland remains in the triangle and two defense, so the perimeter shots on the wing are going to be open, and Duke's going to have to hit them. Vince Taylor has not been able to handle the ball since Branch has taken him in the triangle and two console. Pete Holbert, number 33, now in the game for Maryland. He's a sophomore from Fairfax, Virginia. Branch with the jumper. He's beginning to open up. He's got 11 points to get Maryland a 10-point lead, their biggest lead of the game. Well, Duke was only five points down at the half, despite shooting only 40% from the floor and being out-rebounded by six. Maryland was a little careless with the ball, twice as many turnovers. That kept it close. 
McNeely misses the layup. Rebound, Tissa on traffic. Basket is good, and he's fouled. Tissa with only his second basket of the game. Well, thank you, Mel Proctor. Bucky Waters in that ACC game. We're ready for the second half here at the Milwaukee Arena. Interesting official statistics. DePaul not shooting well from the field in the first half. Marquette having a good half. And look at the free throws. Well, they're making up for their poor shooting with the free throws. Marquette has six more baskets than they do. The turnovers are, are even. The rebounds are a push. Look for uh, Teddy Cummings to... Uh, uh, to break out this half. DePaul was led in the first half by Kenny Patterson, the freshman with nine points. Randolph six, Downing five, Dillard four, Cummings only four all on free throws and Corbin two. And for Marquette, it was Murata with ten, nine Heiss with eight, Rivers seven, Marquardt four, and the leading scorer for the Warriors, Wilson, had only four in the first 20 minutes. The only person in foul trouble on either team is nine Heiss with three fouls. He's hit four for four from the field so far. Teddy Grubbs uh, is ill and is not with the DePaul team this game. He's wondering why we, he has not seen action. Marquette is starting with three guards, so to go into the four corners, which is made famous by our gold medal winning coach for Montreal, Dean Smith of North Carolina. Mandy Johnson, the freshman, beating Murata, and it's knocked away by Dillard, the quick hands of Dillard forcing the steal. That might be the end of the four corners. <laughs> it's a two-headed sword. Neither wins for you or loses for you. When Dean uses the four corners, it's truly an offense, not a delay game. Marquette sits back in a 2-1-2 zone. Deflected by Mandy Johnson. Dillard recovers. Corbin blocked beautifully, and a jump ball is the pull. Mark uh, Murata made a nice block that time from the back. Normally, that ends up being a, a, a foul, but he gets a nice watch. He's back in the man now. Watch it go up. Nice, pure block. He's there as well. The ball goes to DePaul on the alternate possession rule. It's Cummings, Dillard, Randolph with the ball, and he gets a second chance and a third chance is the charm. Now, Kets had problems using during the Randolph. season start in the second half. They didn't start off out of the out of the gate too quickly there in the rebound. Coach Rams has made a substitution, took Manny Johnson out, so now he's thrown the four corners out for a while. Nineheis is in, along with Marquardt. Rivers, Wilson, and Murata. The same uh, team that started the game for Marquette Wilson, out there. And here comes DePaul. They've led three times in the game, all by two points. Biggest lead was Marquette at six points. Memphis State in overtime defeats Louisville today. There, go oh, Cummins. Tough luck. That would have been his first basket. Mark Bart rebounded. Memphis State is for real. I watched them beat Marquette about two weeks ago. They got a great freshman, a kid named Lee. I think it's Keith Lee. It was in that game that Wilson shattered the backboard on one of his dunks. And if we get a chance, we're going to show that to you. Watch Marquette here. I think that uh, Cummings is up tight. He's trying to force everything. Now, he, he doesn't miss shots Marquette. like this. But he just hasn't. The ball hasn't been dropping for him. And like everyone else, if you start missing, you start pushing. And Cummings in the game is now 0 for 5 from the floor. Two minutes gone in the second half. Marquette leads the ball. 33-32. 10th Avenue, according to Al McGuire's glossary, as he returns to Milwaukee. And Marquette is former home base. 10th Avenue, that's one of those push and shove, rough and tumble games. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber is gone for the day. Because Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or will make it right. No excuses. Or that night, you stay free. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain. Not one. So... Let us take care of you. Holiday Inn gives you a guarantee, not excuses. Rolling out the barrels, that's what Texaco is doing, so you'll have the energy you need for now and in the future. To improve our refineries across the U.S., Texaco is planning to invest almost $3 billion over the next seven years. 
refineries mean more gasoline and more barrels of heating oil for you in the years ahead. That's one more way you can trail Marquette. 33-32. This is Skip Diller. Not there. Corbin got away with a little push on the rebound. Stolen. Glenn Rivers with Wilson. What a fast. And he still scored. Nice he, move then, Dick. You see he that? was hit in midair, recovered, and still scored. Yeah, kind of recocked. It looked like it was going to be rejected. He took it back, recocked it, put it up nice and soft, but no effort. Rivers Steele set up the basket and a three-point Marquette lead. That's worth saving. We'll show that to you as soon as we get a chance. Now Marquette's in the 2-3 zone. They lay off Colbin when Colbin goes to the side. They don't think he can hit that well from the outside. This guy can. Go. Patterson, he fills it up. 35-34, 11 points for Patterson. One-point lead for Marquette with the ball. They're 15 and 6, and four of their six losses as Johnson hits. Dwayne Johnson makes it 37 34, his first basket. DJ's the type of kid that comes out shooting. He's an instant coffee type of offense. Marquette 15 and 6, but four of their losses to ranked teams. Beaten by Iowa in overtime. They lost to Minnesota, Memphis State, Kansas State. Terry Cummings has his first basket, and that is the best news of the day for Ray Meyer and DePaul. And now, now it should be uh, DePaul time. Back comes Doc Rivers to make it 39-36, as Rivers now has nine. Doc might have got away with a carry that time. Three-point lead for the Warriors. Formerly the Hilltoppers and the Golden Avalanche. They changed their nickname in the 50s. Patterson gets it back. Cummings misses everything. Corbin Cummings, foul on Wilson of Marquette. Third on Wilson. Marquette foul. Number 10, Michael Wilson. Third, the team That'll first. send Cummings to the line, as you saw in the first half. DePaul was a perfect 10 for 10 from the line, and Cummings was 4 for 4. Some of the fans thought, and so did Hank Raymond, that that should not have been a shooting foul, but he was on his way up. And DePaul continues to be perfect at the charity line. 11 for 11. Normally, it's the home team that has that free throw advantage. Not today. 39, 38 the score. Cummings has matched the four points he scored in the first half. Rivers, Dwayne Johnson, Hartford, Wilson. Wilson to nine heist. That's his first miss of the game. Knocked out of bounds by home. Deep ball. The referees are keeping good balance from each other. Three officials out there, they're keeping their distance from each other, which is a sign of a good, well-oiled working machine. All Big Ten crew. Outside to Wilson. Surprisingly, the ball went into the 2-3, maybe because they took the ball out for the corner. It's been close throughout. The biggest lead was early when Marquette was ahead, 12-6. Hank got the lead by a point. He's going to force the ball to go man to man. They raise their hand. They go to man to man. Here comes Randolph out to pick up DJ. Wilson gets Stiller. He'll take him one on one easily. Anytime Wilson or, or Doc get the ball, watch him go one on one. That's going to be a foul on Randolph reaching around his second. That's only the first team foul on DePaul. And Marquette has only one in this second half. Let's see if it happens this time, Dick. First time or second time that Rivers or Wilson touched the ball and the man-to-man -man that the ball is playing now, they'll take the guy uptown. I would say take the guy to the community. Now they got to come out. They want to set in the zone. They can't. The ball has to come out and play man-to-man -man because they're losing by a point. There's Wilson now. Not there. Rebound Cummings of DePaul. Stolen by Rivers, oh, and he scores! Oh, did you see that hip? Did you see him put the hip in the Cummings that time? Throw play. He has complete control of his body at all times. Now Marquette goes to the 2-3 zone with a three-point lead. Rivers now with 11 points, and they've been sensational. Cummings sets up Randolph, and he's followed by Neinheis. That'll be the fourth on Neinheis. 
Why, watch Doc go here. Doc Rivers okay. from Marquette. Watch how he plays with Cummings four, underneath. Ryan it's Nyan. a missed shot by Get Wilson four. from downtown. Now right here, what, the second he strips, he strips him of the ball. All right, here it is. Now watch him put his hip into him. Watch the hip. See the hip go into him? To just shake him off a little bit. He uses the window. Two points. He is an exciting player. Len Rivers. He, uh, when he was a kid going to assistant coach Rick Majerus' summer camp, he, as an eighth grader, could already dunk, and he had Dr. R, Dr. G on his shirt after Julius Irving because of his dunking ability, and that's where the Doc nickname emanated. Randolph holds the ball to two and now looks for his tenth point of the game. One of the famous house high school ball players. 41 to 40 Marquette. We play five and a half minutes of this second half. Nice pressure up court. They're weak underneath the two men down. Coming, sitting back in the paint. Try a trap now to make them out man to man. Marquette with the load out, make them play man to man. Mark Ward partially blocked by Cummings. And like Cummings that is shot. alone. Uh, you see the breakaway rim that time, Dick and Cave. Are they call it a technical? The yes. Breakaway rim Cave. He did hook it a little bit, but I don't think he hooked it that much. I don't that either. I think he just hit his wrist on the rim as he came through. Well, we'll see it. I hope. And a chance to tie now for Marquette on the technical foul shot. Dillard's talking, trying to cool the guy down a little bit, to cool himself down. But um, the basket is good, and his technical foul. Now, here he goes. It's an isolated shot. He got, a, he got it all to himself. It could have been a layup. Now, watch. Let's see. There he goes. Yep. A yeah, little, little bit. A little bit. But you see the giveaway in that rim, gang? That's what we call breakaway rims. It takes 250 pounds of pressure to have that thing break 35 degrees. Then it snaps into place automatically. Stolen by Dillard. And he misses the layup. Wilson gets it back. Wilson made the technical free throw, so it's tied at 42. So DePaul leading very briefly in the second half, 42-41. And the technical allowed Marquette to tie it up. Inside to Rivers as he posts up on Patterson. Marquardt, look at him battle. And he is fouled by Corbin. Let's go to that Memphis State game. Here's Wilson, 6'3 or 6'4. Watch him as he goes up for the dunk. Now he gets all the way up and he kind of catches the basket on the inside. And there she goes. Christmas time, like an avalanche. And of course, the tragedy of that is, well, for a moment it's amusing, is it's about a 30 minute to 45 minute delay as they put up a new backboard. That's why we can't have the breakaway rim. Only his fifth point of the game, but he's been battling on the boards with some tough customers, Cummings in particular. He makes it 44-42, Marquette. 2-2-1, two, two, pressure up court. DePaul throw a guy in the middle again, and it's all. It's broke. Set up, Marquette comes back into the zone. Cummings hanging and scoring. 44-44, as Cummings has a dozen now. That was some shot. That was the most difficult shot he took all night, and it was pure. Wilson can't get inside, has it stolen by Corbin, and he steals it right back, and the foul's on Corbin. Ray Meyer jumps off his seat. He's upset about the call. I think it was a, it was a chain reaction type call that the ball was stolen back twice. Wilson lost the ball, then Corbin got it, and Wilson returned it again. And, he couldn't control himself, Cobb, and committed this foul. Rivers trying to jam it in, and Cummings steals, and it's stolen back by Dwayne Johnson. Oh, he can't score. Rivers, and a foul technical on Rivers for grabbing the rim. Now, I don't believe in that situation that it is a technical. I think there's a safety hazard in that particular situation. By the rule book, you're allowed to grab the rim Dr. if anyone's Rivers around you, underneath you, so you won't get spun out and get hurt. Let's see him up here. Well, no, there really wasn't anyone around. It was a fellow to his right, which was uh, coming. So it was on Rivers, technical foul, grabbing the iron. And Skip Dillard, an 80% free throw shooter, looks for his fifth point. Andy Paul leads 45-44, and they have the ball. 
Thirteen oh three left in the second half. Let's now, take now, another now, angle. Now watch him go up there in traffic. Doc. Here he's up in traffic. It looked like his feet to me were kind of out from underneath him, and the tendency subconsciously is to grab that rim. Good call by the officials. Marquette's now gone man to man. They'll get the ball in the Cummings. They've gone man to man. Patterson knocked away by Rivers. Wilson one on three. Corbin. Rivers feeds Johnson. Both Doc Rivers with another excellent assist. And Johnson has his fourth point. Marquette back in front by one. Oh, it's been a good game. This is February, March, the best of college basketball action. Dillard brings the ball back in front by one. 47-46. Dillard. 12 minutes, 15 seconds left. We've got great guards in Marquette to keep him in the ball game. There's the man. Rivers tipped by Wilson, knocked away by Cummings. People forget what a great defensive player Cummings is. He's made several turnovers. Dillard, bingo! That is DePaul's biggest lead. Three points. Dillard's with 12 minutes left. Good call timeout by Coach Raymond then. They moved up three points, which... Well, it's heading toward one of those very close games. What do you call those? A white knuckle how about that? Right down to the wire in the terminology of Al McGuire. 49, 46, DePaul. If you're shipping big and small packages, you could feel left out in the cold. If you don't know the company that has its own scheduled delivery of virtually any size package the next morning. Nope, it's not any of them. Introducing Emory A.N. Only Emory delivers any size shipment from ounces to tons to most of America the very next morning. It's the Emory Edge. Take us up on it. Navy missile exercise, Atlantic Range. The Navy. Over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Target's turning starboard outbound. Fire. Birds away. Navy. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Tomorrow, it's a battle for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship as undefeated Davey Moore takes on Tadashi Mahara. Then, continued coverage of the 1982 World Pro Figure Skating Championship with Olympic great John Curry and Randy Gardner tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Dick Emberg and Al McGuire back at the Milwaukee Arena. My buddy, Coach McGuire, feeling a little self-conscious about the fact that we've featured him from our tees through his terminology, but one of the reasons for that is to celebrate his return to this arena where he coached for 13 years. And of course, uh, one of those storybook situations where he announced his retirement in the middle of the year. It wasn't one of your better teams either that you won the championship. No, I had six or seven better clubs, but that club put it all together. They ended up winning at the Omni in 77. They made me a hero. They put my life above the trees. Yeah, their last 11 years, your teams won 20 games or more, 11 straight seasons. 49-46. DePaul shooting much better as they almost reversed roles now. It's DePaul with a hot hand from the floor, and Marquette is schooled off. The Warriors trail by three. 49-46, 11-45 left. Now you can see what DePaul's doing now. They're in a 2-3 zone. Of course, they got a three-point lead. Good. Rivers to Marquardt. Murata, no, stolen by Patterson, and then Rivers steals it back. It goes to Corbin. Hold it. It's Glenn Rivers hurt the side there. No, he's getting up. Oh, Rivers getting up very slowly, in fact. And Dillard trying to save that court. Patterson was smart there. Rather than risking and clipping it back right to a Marquette player for an easy basket, he decided, I'll take the turnover. It's no point violation. What you do is just take the turnover where you get the defense set, especially now, the sit back very tight the 2 three zone, all around the paint. Kenny Patterson really deserves uh, an extra comment. The freshman from Forest Hills, New York, he's playing like a junior or senior. He has really developed to all the potential that Meyer hoped he would bring to this team. Well, basketball, as I said so many times, Dick, it's not a fast game, it's a quick game. He's quick on quick. This is Murata, way 
way off the mark. Marquardt got it, but he was fouled by Randolph reaching in. Bernard Randolph has his third foul. I seem to feel a little indecision coming into Marquette's play. They're going to have to stay confident to get down to the wire against the Paul. I just they seem to be hesitant the last couple of times down in their passing and in their shot selection. 46-43 the score. DePaul leads. Marquette led by three at the half. Oh, Corbin almost with a steal. Marquette, big men are not coming out to meet the ball. And it, it, it's just a little indecision, a little tightness coming over them, I think. Uh, what they got to do now is keep the ball in the Aces' hands, which would be Wilson here and Rivers. It's again, the ball's getting quicker as the game goes on, especially inside that tight zone. You can't get inside it, gang. You're going to have to shoot from the outside. Rivers goes in, shot. and that's jamming his way. A foul on Rivers, and it was a good call. I, I really think, Dick, I feel a twist in the game coming right here. Now, either Marquette needs some type of run to get that confidence going. Sports is momentum. One team goes and stops, and the other team goes and stops. And, and Glenn, that time, obviously went solo. NC, no contest, Curtin. Rivers, who has been excellent feeding off. He has 10 assists today. 46 to Paul's biggest lead, and now they're going to try to pull uh, Marquette out of the zone. They will. <laughs> Turn about is fair play. Got the um, got the old pro Ray on the bench down here, and the old pro Hank on Hank Raymond's on the Marquette bench. They've been through many a battle. Cummings blocked by Nineheis from behind. Nineheis, he had his hand on the ball. Well, I, I'd have to call that. I think about. It. <laughs> Two times down, uh, there have been some questionable no calls by Marquette. 49-48 again, quick hands in that deep ball defense. Randolph knocks it out of bounds. Here's the first play to, uh, where Cummings, uh, they thought he was hit underneath here. This he goes around. He thought that the man in front, not nine eyes in the back was good, but Marotta in front, not Marotta, Mark Marquardt in front fouled him. But the, uh, the old man of the sea is really going on here. He's the Churchill of coaches. They both found their, their September years, the glory years of their lives. And we're headed toward a white knuckler in Milwaukee. What's more natural than pasta and beer? Ah, what's more natural than natural light from Anheuser-Busch? The beer with a taste for food. It's natural, and it's light. So when you want to leave room for more... What's more natural than natural light? The shape. Celebrity. The bright new shape of Chevrolet is here. A front-wheel drive shape, so aerodynamic, it requires less than 12 horsepower to cruise at 50 miles an hour. Surprising mileage with standard engine electronic fuel injection. Celebrity. The new shape of room, reflected in the new size. The bright new shape of Chevrolet. Now get a $500 cash bonus on the new Chevrolet Celebrity. College basketball. Notre Dame. UCLA, the rivalry, never ordinary, always dramatic, a classic, tomorrow. Sell out of over 11,000 in the Milwaukee right Arena. Now. Ray Meyer, the winningest active coach in the country. Division one schools, the number five all time. This team looking for its 20th win today. Their only loss was at UCLA, 87-75. Marquette with a basket would move in front.
was setting himself for the rebound. That's three times that Rivers has fooled his teammates. Yep. Maryland leading Duke late in the second half by six. Our other NBC game today. Nine minutes remaining in this game. Patterson inside to Cummings. Nice move. Can't hit. But Corbin follows it in, and he is fouled. Mark Harada. Isn't it surprising how when the ball won't drop down for you, Cummings must have had six or seven. Now watch Cummings' shot here. He just won't seem to go down. He free moves to the weak side of the basket, just plays around up there. Corbin goes up, and he's caught. Could be a three-point play. Harada's second foul. And a chance for DePaul to move into a four-point lead if Corbin can make the free throw. We have had an unusual game today. There has not been a missed free throw yet. DePaul is 15 for 15, and Marquette has made all four of its tries. If one's going to be missed, they'll probably be missed now because it took so long to get the spell of the ball. They're drying up the floor. Gave him too much time to think. Told there it is. <laughs> When you give a ball player too much time to think, he usually ends up in Tap City. 2-3 zone to Paul. Marquette, nice steal. Dillard again. Skip Dillard has had four or five steals. Gotta watch out, Wilson. It'll be a fourth foul over there. Nice and fresh. Look the fresh out here running traffic. Cop in the middle of uh, 42nd Street Broadway. Clock ticking away, 8.14, 8.13 left. Patterson gets away from Wilson and now Cummings. Patterson fouled by Wilson. That'll be four on Wilson. And Patterson at six, one and a half. After he made his pass, moved inside, and had position for the rebound. His fourth. As he goes up for the shot here, Wilson's so active underneath. Watch him go up here. Extremely active guy. Goes into an obvious foul. It's his fourth. I don't think coach will make a move because you're, you're pretty close to prime time right now. Eight minutes to go in the game. 51 to 48, DePaul leads it. lead 53-48. Must score this time down. Again, they'll come out in the 2-3 zone, make the shoot from the outside. Wilson. The ball was hit by a DePaul player. That's why it was not traveling. There's a foul on Randolph of DePaul. His fourth. There's five team oh, fouls oh, on Marquette. And there are Randolph. how many on DePaul? Five. Yeah. Okay. Steven. Marquette needs a basket right around here. Keep it in the ball. Marquardt, way off the mark. Rebound coming. See that indecision coming in about four minutes ago. It stayed. And Skip Diller, nothing indecisive about that as the ball goes up by seven. How can someone explain confidence? It's so wild with college guys. When you start hitting the Everything goes in, and all of a sudden, when you start getting tight, nothing goes in. Wilson inside, stolen again by DePaul. Patterson. Oh, Rivers blocked it, but also fouled Patterson. Where do you see how high Dick that Rivers went up on this one? I think he might have hit his elbow on the back border of the rim. Let's see. Here it goes. Let's see if he did. There he goes. Mark. Yeah, see that? I told you. See, see that? That's Very unbelievable. He hit the backboard show? and the rim yep, yep. on the way down. Can we can we show that again? You got to realize this guy's only six foot four. Anderson Obviously, in two. my opinion, a future All-American. Watch how high he goes up. And which where he hit, look where he hits his arm. And he still hits the rim. Watch, he comes back, hits the rim on the on the rebound. Yeah, but his elbow. Oh, he was up above the square, above the rim. Patterson hits again. Wayne Johnson for nine Just nine. lost their Mark confidence Jackson. with about 12 minutes to go in the second half here, and they haven't regained it. Wilson's kind of got kind of quiet out there, and so has uh, Rivers. And obviously the zone that the ball has got into with a lead gets stronger and stronger as the points go up. Patterson misses that one. 
And for the first time is the freshman Terry Reason. He collected that rebound. He's from Fresno, California. A shooter. And they need one against his own. Mark Ward, not there. And rebound comes off to Corbin. I Marquette has to come out there and cover them all over the court now. Create plays. A lot of time, but they gotta create play. They gotta keep the tempo going. 635. Coming. Not there. Rivers moving inside to rebound. He is a big 6-4. This is his game right here. Reason. This is everything. Take it yourself, Glenn. Nope. Dwayne Johnson, another freshman, makes it 56-50. With six minutes, 13 seconds left. Anybody's game, plenty of time, with the ball in the driver's seat right now. They gotta play Cummings man to man, and that's dangerous. Randolph not there, Mark Ward knocked it away. That was still the ball game, don't it? Better get up to that defensive man, Wilson. Johnson. 56-52, the freshman Johnson. to this crowd. Five minutes, 46 seconds left. DePaul was up by eight, but no tap city yet for Marquette. They pulled within four. Every time the Connecticut State Police pull someone over, a Honeywell computer goes to work. A Honeywell computer displays police reports on the car and warns if the driver is considered dangerous. Permanent, that's our man. Roger. License and registration, please. Will you follow me, please, Mr. Johnson? Your wife just had a baby girl. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Hey, this is Bob Hope. You know, what Texaco looks for oil, there's more to it than just poking a hole in the ground. We could have to drill down over four miles through hundreds of layers of soil and rock. And spend millions of dollars. This is no bargain basement. But it's worth it if we can find oil to meet your needs for gasoline and heating oil in the years ahead. You can trust the star at home and in your car. Tomorrow, a knockout of the show on NBC Sports World. Undefeated Davey Moore battles Tadashi Mahara for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Plus, the 1982 World Pro Figure Skating Championship continues with heartthrob Randy Gardner tomorrow. Our statistician Steve Nance, an interesting statistic. As the Falls guard scoring 23, Marquette 18. Of course, at the start, you figured that Marquette's strength would be in the backcourt. Yeah, I kind of got a leg on my tie on that, but I, I believe that the ball has so much more help on the baseline that makes their guards more effective. They've got two men coming, coming all the time, where Marquette's two guards have to do it solo. Five and a half minutes left. The Paul looking for its 20th win against only one defeat this year, has a four point lead. For Marquette, they called this their biggest game of the season. A victory would almost put them in the national tournament. Watch the turnaround shot here. Don't kick it back out. Too soon to slow down, Duke Demon. You gotta keep playing. You get burnt by doing this. In the Cummings. There she goes. And a foul on Dwayne Johnson of Marquette, his second. Good call. You know what happens a lot of time in basketball? People start playing not to lose. You can't do that. You got to play to win. Now he's just going to turn around. One of his best shots is just turn around, and he gets slammed by DJ Dwayne Johnson. It's a hammer job. Cummings, a 70% free throw shooter, perfect today. Six for six. 57-52. The Demons by five. Eight in a row from the line, and now 16 points for Cummings, and a six-point to ball lead. Mark Ward over Cummings, not there. Knocked out by DePaul. I just.
just feel that the ball should be in the hands of the guards now or Dwayne Johnson. I don't think Marquardt should be taking those shots. He should put him up off rebounds, but not going solo. It's uh, really an important time of the game right now for Marquette. Inside to Johnson. He was the Catholic player of the year in high school last year in New York City. At Mater Christi, same school that produced Tony Bruin for Syracuse. Four point to ball lead, Randall. Playing a little tentative because he has four fouls. Cummings, two men on him, so he dishes off. Four minutes, 14 seconds left. See that they're, they're floating off top. Cummings hits it beautifully. He hangs back and he keeps that hand way back of his body. Very difficult to stop that shot. 54 to ball. Rivers. There. Look at that jump. Oh, get oh, up. Boy. And score. Yeah. yeah, when he was in uh, Wisconsin going to St. John's Military School, they won the state championship private school two years in a row. Marquardt knocks it out of bounds. It'll be DePaul's ball. Dwayne Johnson is only 6'6". Look at him to get up for the rebound against much taller men. Well, he, he can rebound in traffic. Watch him go up between the two DePaul men, come down, he knows how to use his body. He gets a little shuffle there, got away with it, then off the backboard. This is Dillard and a foul. Wilson holding, and he has fouled Watch out for the technical, Wilson. You better just leave him alone, Wilson. Too important this time of the game to take a tee. He's upset. Good player. High strong. Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson leads the game. Leading scorer on the season, but only seven points today for Wilson, who averages 17 on the season. He's been the captain the last two years. He's from Memphis. Very high class young guy. Here's the foul coming up where Wilson went to the pine. First, let's watch Cummings on the free throw line, where he's been a perfect eight for eight today. That is his 19th point, 15 in the second half. That last foul shot left a little bit to be desired. Let's see if he gets back on target. Yep, back on target. The last one kind of played around a little bit. So he's a perfect 10 for 10, and if DePaul wins this, they're going to win it on free throw. Well, he's a perfect 10 anyway. I think he's the number one power forward in college basketball. Rivers from deep in the corner. Johnson got his hands on it, but Cummings, Patterson. Called on home. On Clay? Johnson of Marquette, third on Johnson. Well, if both benches are jumping up. The referees are trying to say, hey, keep it calm, keep it calm. And here they go down. It's they really playing out of sight ball, each team. They're going up. Here I thought was a foul right there. Then I thought Cummings grabbed the rim here. Then Dwayne Johnson came on Cummings back. He thought he was the uh, the long range. Cummings makes it 11 in a row, and DePaul builds its lead to seven. And there he is. If he makes this, he'll be at his average. And he scored 18 of those 22 in the second half. No game this year has Cummings been stopped. Three minutes and 12 seconds, and ticking away as the clock becomes a big factor. Reason not there, and it's knocked away by his teammate, Neinheis. That hurt. They both were trying too hard to get the ball, got in each other's way. Two minutes left, and Maryland's lead against Duke is down to two points. Two minutes left at College Park. Timeout, DePaul, 2.59 left. And when Al McGuire signs his autograph, seashells and balloons, that's his happiness code. That kind of means live each day. Let the day come to you rather than you go to the day. Rainbows and sunsets. Yellow ribbons and medals. I'll tell you, we never realized golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. Sauce links to drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. 
Chevrolet announces the biggest news ever in diesel power light duty Chevy trucks. The new 6.2 liter diesel, available in all full size Chevy pickups, Suburbans, and four wheel drive Blazers. It's a V8 built for trucks only. Everybody knows diesels get good mileage. They're more efficient than gas engines of comparable size. The new 6.2 liter diesel. Now get a $750 cash bonus on new Chevy full size pickups, Suburbans, Blazers, and vans. A renewal of one of the greatest rivalries in college basketball. And the battle for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship. Undefeated Davey Moore takes on Tadashi Mahara. Plus figure skating with heartthrob Randy Gardner tomorrow. Seashells and balloons. There's happiness in the Al McGuire family. Son Allie, who was a starter in the backcourt for Coach McGuire here at Marquette. Handsome man now broadcasting radio and television here in Milwaukee. Watch for the ball to try to take the air out of the ball now. Work against the clock. Less than three minutes remaining. Andy Paul yes! foul on Nineheis for pushing his fourth, fifth make it. And that's all for Nineheis. He becomes the second warrior to foul out. His fifth. Mark Ward will replace Nineheis. He leaves with eight points, all of those scored in the first half. What was that story when George Frazier was the sixth man on your uh, Marquette team, and he came to you and said he thought he should start ahead of Alley? Well, uh, uh, George Frazier was a great ball player. We used to call him Sugar. And uh, he came to me and says, uh, uh, I'm as good as your son Al. I should be playing. I says, George, baby, I love my son Al. For you to play, he must be better than he is. He wins all pushes. <laughs> That's a great answer. I'm sure he understood that. Ten point lead now for DePaul, and Cummings has 24. He has played an All American second half. Reason connects his first basket, makes it 66 58. Two and a half left. Marquette needs a turnover bid. Manning Johnson in there very quick. Get the ball to Cummings. I've learned that from you. Get it to your All American. I would foul Colvin as soon as he touches the ball. Foul him, foul him, foul him, foul him, foul him. No, he didn't do it. Don't foul him. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of time left. He's going to foul the right guy. Now, you got to foul anyway. Now, you just can't let the clock keep moving. Come on, hug him a little bit. He dribbled it on the sidelines, and Marquette on the turnover with 2.06 left, trailing by eight. Look for Glenn to go solo. Here's Rivers with the ball. By the first line of the zone, Glenn. Reason puts it up again. He was the third leading scorer in California.